Sarah Obad, we hear from Nation, joined by the new track announcer at Parks, Jessica Paquette. Thank you for taking the time to chat some Breeders' Cup with me, and congratulations on your new role at Parks. Thank you. I'm really excited to get started. About a month away, I'll be kind of getting comfortable in the booth. That's so awesome. And you've called races before, so this isn't exactly brand new, but your first track that's yours, right? Yes, it's going to be mine, which is actually the part that's the most exciting. Super cool. And obviously your handicapping opinion um, has been great all throughout uh, the time that I've known you and known of you and Colonial this summer. You also had some success over there. So it was fun to watch you over there. Can't wait to hear your calls at parks. And there's a horse in this race that we're going to be talking about, the Juvenile Phillies Turf, which will go as race number eight on Future Stars Friday for the Breeders' Cup that you have some familiarity with since she broke her maiden at Colonial, and that's going to be the number 11, G. Lori. Having seen this horse in person, what can you tell me about her? She's my strongest opinion of the entire week, to be honest with you. Uh, Ooh, okay. I, I love this Philly going into the Natalma. I think she got a lot out of that race. She had a really terrible trip. And the thing I noticed most about her at Colonial is simply how green she was. Um, brilliantly talented, very, very green. I remember her coming back to the winner circle and the steeplechase hurdles were still set up on the outside of the uh, outer turf course. And she was just like snoring, eyeballing, could not buy them, just real, real baby antics, but obviously very talented. And the way she ran on despite a really terrible turbine makes her very appealing here. And ultimately to me, this boils down to a grand motion I trust. Going from a maiden, you know, maiden <laughs> debut win to a grade one, bold move. And he doesn't often do that. And that he's still Still pressing onward to the Breeders' Cup with this filly, even though she didn't win the Natalma. And, you know, you could, whether it's a terrible trip or not, you know, she was third. It was an okay effort. Uh, I think that's his confidence in her says a lot to me. And on debut, too, she had this really eye-catching move that I feel like you can hear in Jason Beam's call be like, oh, like, gee, Lori, and like really pointing out that she was making this sort of aggressive move to take over in there. Um, and it, it really caught my eye, and I'm sure it caught yours as well, seeing that happen um, in, in real life. Um, and the Natalma, certainly, even if you don't think it was a terrible trip, you have to at least admit that she had some significant traffic in there while the winner of that race last call got a great trip on the outside, unhampered by the traffic. And we also have the second place finisher in there who had some traffic trouble as well in Cairo Consort, those two being drawn more to the inside. So I think definitely a key race that we're looking at. I'd want the horses that had the trouble versus the one that got the better trip. Oh, I completely agree. And she's also a pretty petite filly as well. And I think they can have a little bit of a harder time re-rallying if they get knocked around a bit. I agree. And they're putting the blinkers on her to not exactly a move that Graham Motion has uh screaming successful stats with, but not one that he's bad with either. Um, do you think that this will make a significant difference for her or kind of just to keep some of those uh, baby antics to a minimum? Well, I think seeing how look he's um, in that first race, I mean, even coming back and maybe even during the race, you know, you, you don't know what they're actually looking at. Um, I think the blinkers may actually really help her. Well, both of us having some interest in G. Laurie at a decent price at 12 to 1 drawing um, more to the outside in post 11. We have a lot of European invaders in this race, but surprisingly, I think this isn't one of their stronger suits as far as defeating the more locally based horses. They haven't won that many runnings of this race. For the Euros that are coming in, did any of them catch your attention? Were there any that you're kind of inclined to fade? Where are you going with some of these Euros? For me, I think I think this is a race that is one of the more wide open on the Breeders' Cup card. It's easy to get a little seduced by some of these European horses with the, the you know, typical international dominance in the turf races. For me, I think the domestic group is a little bit too strong, though I do give Basil Martini a little bit of an interest for me on the outside. On Velasquez, on the turf, these are no-brainers. These are the horses that pop up at big prices, and you go, this is why Johnny V is the best. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and for Joey O'Brien, who um, has had some success in winning races in the U.S. before um, as well. Uh, Chatra, she tried the dirt last time in uh, at Keeneland, and I get why they had to take that shot on dirt. And I, I don't feel like she ran that badly, but I'm glad that she does end up getting into 
the juvenile Phillies turf here, um, even after that effort, because her maiden win was so impressive. And even her debut behind Pink Hugh was not uh, that bad either. I don't love post 13 necessarily, but I don't hate it either. And while she wasn't disgraced in her dirt attempt, I do feel like the turf is probably a better surface for her. So I'm, I'm definitely very interested in her. Do you look at this horse at all? She was kind of a pass for me. Yeah. There are just, I, there are so many other horses that I find more interesting. Uh, that's the tough thing. The beautiful tough thing about these Breeders' Cup races is you wind up just having to eliminate some horses for no reason other than you like others more. <laughs> and that's totally okay as well since, um, you know, eight to one, not necessarily a short price, but with such a wide open field of 14, uh, if you're hunting bigger game, I can definitely respect it. Um, Delight, I feel like, is one of the ones that I'm inclined to toss, who is one of the shorter priced horses, winner of that Jessamine. She does have a win over the course, which not um, others, others don't have to their credit, but I, I feel like she had things really go her own way last time and set a fairly tempered pace, and I just don't see a race like this playing out so much so to her favor, um, and I definitely am not interested at six to one. See, and she is one that I'm having a hard time getting past using at least on my oh, tickets. Okay. Uh, for me to see a uh, Jonathan Thomas horse come out so precocious, and clearly she's a quality two year old who's running early. There are also certain silks that really play to our hearts as racing fans. And for me, those Augustine Stable silks, silks, those green and white silks, nothing to me is more iconic. Um, with greatness and on the turf because I am old. Um, <laughs> delight. <laughs> I do think her best is probably ahead of her. I think this is a filly who I, you know, I hope we see her in the Virginia Oaks maybe next year. She kind of strikes me as that sort of type though. You know, I will not be there in person next year, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but uh, delight. I think, I, I think she's the real deal. Okay. Well, that's what it's all about. Some differences of opinion. Um, Pleasant Passage winner last time out. She is a perfect two for two. Irad Ortiz Jr. sticking with this one for Shug McGahey. This horse is working very well. She has some bullet turf works coming into this race. And this is a trainer that isn't necessarily known to work his horses fast. So I know that there's a few uh, Twitter friends of mine that are giving this horse a look at a price. Is this one that you were interested in or not really? Very interested. Um, to me, physically, she looks like a three-year-old. She looks incredibly well-developed, more than ready out of that female family. I mean, I'm a pedigree nerd, and I spent far more time than I should admit going through that like multi-generational quality female family. Just nice horses everywhere, every way you look, like Hungry Island, ton of fun turf horses. And this really looks so well-developed and off of that work tab, undefeated record. I think she's going to be awfully tough. 12 to 1 to me seems like a total steal on this filly. I think too might want to say it was the yielding ground last time that maybe she just appreciated that more so um, and her just being good. But I don't think she needs any sort of specialty within the surface to show that she can do well, even though she won the Miss Grillo on that yielding turf um, over Free Look and Be Your Best, who are also in here. But I mean, be your best and free look seem like quality fillies and the fact that she beat them uh, fairly easily in that effort and she's going to be a bigger price than both of them. I think that Pleasant Passage is definitely one that deserves a look in a spot like this. Um, oh, but going so. out, agreed. Um, going outside of that one, who else in here is uh, kind of piquing your interest? I know that pedigrees are something that you're interested in with these two-year-olds. I feel like it's kind of so much more of an important clue because we just haven't seen as much from them on the racetrack yet. So uh, who else is catching your eye? I mean, honestly, those we've kind of covered my top three with Okay. G. Laurie and Delight and Pleasant Passage. That's where I think I'm being clever with those horses. But I think this is a race that is really ripe for some horses offering some value, maybe at a big price. I think you kind of need to give a look to Free Look, sure. But I think she'll be a little bit over bet. Uh, she's done everything right. But again, Cap, I go through horse by horse and just kind of make my first impression and like make a quick note. These are often not fit for public consumption because because sometimes they are not nice. <laughs> they are more my notes for my own mental reference. Um, the, I mean, what I wrote about Rich Strike, let's just, it, like that one came back to <laughs> But <laughs> But free look, I just think there are plenty of others that are more interesting. I mean, we're here for your opinions, good, bad, and ugly. So um, yeah. I understand I, I, if you don't I, want to I, offend I, anyone. 
Uh, there, there are ways to say the thing without being offensive. Uh, another horse yeah. that a big price I'm a little bit interested in is uh, Last Call coming out of the Natalma. She did have the best of everything that day and turned in a really good effort to win. I am a diehard English Channel fan. They age like a fine wine. They are never going to win any beauty contests. They're never going to show themselves at the sale as a young horse. They're all kind of small and a little common looking, to be to be honest. And she was no exception. I remember doing an I was doing some ADR stream, watching her in the paddock and in the post parade. I was like, oh wow, she is she is not much. And the English channels just run despite that. They kind of they're more than the sum of their parts. And, and Frankie de Tori certainly it. doesn't. Hurt. That's exactly, you read my mind. That's exactly what I was going to say next. Getting Frankie Dettori at 20 to 1 is never a bad thing on the grass. Um, I mean, she did break her maiden in that race as well. So huge upset in there. But I mean, clearly the, the sky is blue going forward as it is for many of these young ladies. Um, I was a really big Be Your Best fan. I really liked her in the PG Johnson. Uh, I want to blame the ground last time, but I just don't think I can blame the the condition of the turf enough to make a case for her to win this race, especially at a shorter pace than the winner of that one. She just really didn't kick last time. I thought it was a pretty flat performance. Um, and again, Pleasant Passage was so impressive that day. So maybe she just made everyone else look a little average, but. I, I'm really proud of myself because I usually get very stuck on these horses that I like at one time and then they're pets and then I keep them forever and then they never win. Yeah, the um, only but... one is, is I'm so guilty of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I'm trying to be better about that. And so uh, I'm, be your best is kind of off the list for now. And so hopefully um, I, I've just put her in the winner's circle. But yeah, I, I just could not endorse too much off of that what I saw last time, which really wasn't too much. Um, Phil D'Amato is a trainer that I, I'm East Coast biased, as I know you are as well. He's a trainer that is more West Coast based and I, I'm not super familiar with, but just watching uh, some of his horses over the past weekend alone, he is, this is the hottest barn right now to me. I mean, his horses are just on a tear, especially on the grass. He's won multiple stakes races, not only in California, but he just won the Bryan Station here at Keeneland as well with Balnikov. And he has the number one horse, Comanche Con Count County? Country. County. I can't read my own handwriting. County. <laughs> country. Um, <laughs> country. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Undefeated in the U.S. since coming over from Ireland after her first two starts. I mean, are we underestimating this horse at 15 to 1 for a barn that is uh, on fire right now? I think she is going to have to run over an entirely different turf course than she was running over at Delmar. Um, and I think especially looking at how inconsistent her Irish form was on ground with a little bit more give to it. Uh, you know, I think she certainly appreciated the harder, tighter turf course at Del Mar. And it was a pretty dry summer out there as well. So they did kind of get a pretty firm turf course regularly. It's a, it's an entirely different animal at Keeneland. Some horses definitely do appreciate that very, very firm turf. Um, I, I might consider her underneath somewhere just with the way that the barn is going. And since she has proven to be capable of handling this distance while some others have not. And with all of this talk about all of these different horses, we have yet to get to, I think, the most dangerous to some Euro invader in the number 10, Meditate for Ryan Moore and Aiden O'Brien. Uh, I understand, but I'm not really totally convinced, and I feel like you're not either. I mean, she's obvious for sure, right? But it is occasionally tough to take a horse doing something for the first time at a short price. And we, they are asking her to go a little bit longer. And I'm not entirely convinced that that's where she's going to excel. I think she might be more of a turf sprint type down the line. Certainly precocious, certainly talented. These are connections that need no introduction. I mean, they will both forget more about horses than I will ever know. But, you know, at a short price, this is your chance to try to beat a favorite. I'm with you. I think that I'm a little surprised that she's not in the juvenile turf sprint. Um, maybe they just want to, they believe that she can go longer. She's been a short price in all of her starts so far. She's never finished worse than second, but uh, I don't know. I mean, something just telling me that I, I want a bigger price in here and that I've seen more from, from some of these other horses that are, are going to be long shots. And I think that people that don't necessarily want to do all the work of all the replays and all the investigation into the pedigrees and into these young horses are kind of just going to gravitate towards the obvious. And I feel like that's just, that's not my job. 
Right. And this is one of those races, I think, that there are so many interesting contenders at big prices. Um, just eating some chalk is a little bit of a cop out here. I agree with you. All right. Well, is there anyone else that we need to give a mention that we haven't talked about yet? We've covered pretty much most of the field. Yeah, I think we I think we covered it. I think this is one of the most interesting races. When you told me this was the race I was doing, I was very excited. It was, it's my strongest opinion. All right, great. Well, I'm glad that I sniffed that out because I, I saw that this was a horse that um, I liked a little bit and that was one that you had seen. So I was like, I have to have Jess for this one. So I'm glad that you I like her. Cool <laughs> no shame in that whatsoever. Um, but again, congratulations. I'm so excited that you're going to be another woman in racing that's making history. And obviously as a woman myself, that's always a uh, thrilling to see and just something that's always very inspiring. So I know that um, you're very excited to take over that announcer's role and I'm, I'm excited to see uh, all the success that you have in it. And just thank you again for taking the time to talk some Breeders' Cup. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It was my pleasure.